All right, so yesterday was a great day. Obviously, Bruce Barkley basketball um, had some of our you know best donors and fans and friends. Uh, but the one thing that blew me away was to hear Charles Barkley, who you know is an Olympic gold medalist, you know, one of the best 50 players to ever play in the NBA. Uh, you know, played in the finals against Michael Jordan, all of his accomplishments, right? And he says the second best thing that ever happened to him. Uh, and his athletic experience was Auburn just running the Final Four. Um, you know, was, that was pretty impressive to me. Um, and, I, and I think he meant it, right? Uh, it just tells you how much he loves Auburn and how much it, how much it still matters to him, right? So, um, anyways, it was just great having him back and had a really good day. Uh, you know, you might think this, the start of practice is not a big deal. Uh, because we've been going. I do think that the NCAA has done an outstanding job with the adjustments in the rules. In other words, we used to have a hard October 15th start date. And we used to go double sessions and we're playing in about two or three weeks. And it put the student athletes at risk as far as injury was concerned. I mean, it made for a little better September and October from us as far as a time management standpoint. But the chance to continue to work with these guys since the middle of August and practice one, you know, two or three days a week and with our four hours plus the four hours of training. It was just a great way to get these guys prepared. I think the quality of basketball was better early in the season because of it. The quality of basketball needs to be better early in the season. You look at the November tournaments, you look at these schedules in the preseason. It used to be just Maui. Now it's not just Maui. Now everybody gets a chance to play in really, really high powered uh, non-conference events. And you know, we certainly have uh, Plenty, plenty of those, but it, but but even though it, we've been practicing today, is still an exciting time. Bruce, you mentioned in the offseason you thought this team was well, before Allen, I think, but that this team was capable of a Final Four run. What what do you what are your expectations? You know, Allen is the fourth leading returning scorer in the SEC. He's one of the best players returning, and so his loss is uh, that's a big loss in, in the SEC. It's a big loss in college basketball. Um, I do think we've got some guys that can step up, and I, and I think they will. Um, um, my biggest, uh, our greatest strength is our depth. My biggest concern are really two things. One, the newness of our team, four or five potentially new starters, having a uh, what could be a, a brand new backcourt. I mean, I knew that when I talked about a potential Final Four run. Um, and just the, just the inexperience of, of, of having to get there. So therefore, we're going to have to be a team that's going to have to get better throughout the season. We just are. And I think I think all teams, you can say, it's, it's kind of, you know, we, we can say that every year. I probably say that every year, but it's really true. But this team should get better because they are so new. I was just talking to Wendell. And Wendell said, said you know, I know what we do. I know what we do. And I understand it in practice and stuff like that. But, man, I just don't know what it's going to be like in that first game because he's never played in this system. He's never played with these guys. And yet, you know, ready or not, here it comes. It's going to be real. And it's not like we have you know, four or five practice games to get ready. So it'll, 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 we'll have to, we'll have to obviously, we'll learn a lot about our team, uh, but that doesn't, does not discount how hard they've worked and how they, how prepared they are for the first day of practice. As far as Wendell and uh, Zep, how did they kind of differ on the floor and you plan on flipping them kind of in the lineup? I think one of the things that, that, that is, is worth stating is that they're going to play together, which you would think, well, because they're your two point guards, how's that possible? It's going to be challenging, but I think they'll play together just much like Javon McCormick and, and Jared Harper played some together. Uh, Samir Dowdy played one and two and played together. What makes it difficult is, you know, getting getting whoever it's going to be, most likely Zep, to play point guard and off the ball. And again, this being his first year, learning both positions because it's 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 different. Um, Wendell can really shoot it. Wendell's not afraid of the moment. Wendell's offense is ahead of his defense. Um, the thing about Wendell Green is this. Since he was a little boy, he's been playing with and against great players. He's been on really good high school teams, really good AAU teams. He's played with and against pros. And then when it was time to go to college, nobody thought he was good enough or big enough. And that's why he winds up in Eastern Kentucky. And so he is not going to be intimidated by what he's fixing to face. But it is still a real opportunity for him to be able to answer the bell. You know, you are a dynamic, dominating mid-major point guard. What what are what are you gonna be like now every night at the high major level? 
we go back to his time at Lalamure, uh, you know, I feel good about it. Um, Wendell can, they, they can both shoot it, which I think is good in our system. Uh, Zepp, though, is a dynamic defender. He can really get after you, not only individually himself, but he makes everybody else out there defensively better. Uh, he's a little bigger, he's a little bit more physical. Not a pure point guard. Of course, Wendell is a pure shooting point guard. Zepp is more of a combo guard, guy that can play off the ball just as well as he can play with the ball. Bruce, what are you guys focusing on for the next couple weeks of practice? We're going to begin to start playing teams. Um, we're going to start off tomorrow playing Leola, who's an opponent we could see out in, uh, out in, in, in the Paradise Ship. So what I do for about a month before the season is I give my guys the scouts, which means I start to begin to put in the different actions, the different actions that we need to cover so that we then play against those teams and we have film on it so that when we get ready to play them, we've got film on how we guarded the things that they guarded and it's a way of teaching your guys, also getting our coaches ready as far as their scouting uh, in advance. And that's gonna be like we're gonna like, so today, today I'm gonna teach pressure sets. I'm gonna teach how we're gonna break pressure. At the same time, I'm gonna be teaching our defense, this is how we're gonna be, this is how we would guard that pressure so that when we get pressed, so there's just a lot of things that we'll be, lot, lot will be adding. For the first four or five weeks, it's been really a lot of shell, a lot of the basics of our offense, a lot of repetition. We're gonna move faster now. Now we're gonna go from one scout to the next scout to the next scout, and the guys are gonna have to stay, be able to stay up with it. How about your front court and some of the, the weapons and pieces you have there? Well, this is the biggest front court I've ever had. It's the longest front court I've ever had. I mean, I've never had a 7-1 guy that can shoot the three ball and, and a 6-9 power. You know, I like to call, by the way, I, I really have gotten to the point right now where we're calling our four, or what would be a traditional power four with a big guard. Because Chuma was really a big guard. Isaac was a big guard. J uh, JT, he spent a lot of time in the perimeter. I mean, there was nothing power about his game. So it's really, he's not a power forward. Jamari's not a power forward. He's a big guard with real skill. And we play four out, one in. So we really play four guards. Now you might look at Deshaun Murray and say, well, yeah, you could call it that because he was only 6'3", and you played three, four small guys. So. There are a lot of big guards in the NBA, so we're playing. We're playing, you know, those four guards, and we'll we'll always play. We'll always play one in. With practice and uh, starting, Bruce, just how valuable are these next few weeks before you guys get into the start of the year? Well, I mean, they're they are valuable. Um, and again, I know I'm repeating myself from yesterday, but uh, playing, um, you know, we're not allowed to communicate like the results of our UAB scrimmage. But we're gonna go up there to play a UAB team that returns almost everybody and a great coach that that throws the, everything but the kitchen sink at your defensively. And Andy changes defense in the middle of defense as he's just changed, right? I mean, it's just, it's, and he's really good. And so you also could, you know, take your team. I mean, that'd be, you know, that's gonna be a, a tough one. I'd rather have that October 23rd. And then just, and then the Southern Indiana team, again, um, my last year at Tennessee, my last year at Tennessee, uh, a year that we won our first like five or six games, including beating like number three Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh, right? And got ranked in the top 10 in the country. Southern Indiana came into Tennessee and beat us. And they exhibition came in and beat us. And uh, a couple years ago when they came in here, we, we beat them in overtime. So in other words, got another good contest. So I just want to get exposed. It's hard to expose our guys uh, against a scout team. And it's sometimes even hard to expose our guys against each other. You talked about uh, a little bit yesterday about how in the past you, you the mentality or the philosophy is maybe have them in their best shape by January and how this year it's got to be by November. What does that look like in practice? So I, I wouldn't even say November as much as I'll say sometime in November. Uh, I've always held a philosophy that if you get them in the best shape to start the season, by the time we get to mid-February, they're done, they're popped, they're exhausted. And so sometimes my guys will actually look a little out of shape early because to get them in great shape, you got to beat them. You gotta beat them down pretty good. You gotta run them really, really hard. A little bit more tendonitis, a little bit more soreness. And I don't I don't typically like to try to get to, to some time at the start of start of SEC season, start of conference play. I think this year, because we've got so many good non-conference games, you know, against Oklahoma and, and the Big 12 and Nebraska, the Big 10, and the Paradise Jam, the teams that we gotta go to South Florida. We got Central Florida beat us coming in. We gotta go to St. Louis. I mean it's it's we better we've got to be in shape a little sooner this year, and then manage uh, the rest and recovery as we get into SEC play.
Bruce, have you guys gotten the official word that the arena is going to be 100%? And, and if it is, how much of a difference does that make for you guys? Yeah, we've, not got, we've not got the official word. Gotcha. You know what I mean? We're having a press conference outside, so we don't have to all, all be masked up. That's that's why we're outside. It's a beautiful day, and I'm standing behind Charles's. You know, I'm standing behind Charles, right? Um, and that's really that's really kind of why um, we're moving forward like it's going to be right, it's just going to be normal. And uh, I'm as hopeful that we're able to do it as you are, and the players are for sure, and the students are, because it's been it's been it's been tough. But last year was tough. Was, yeah, well, you go ahead. Go ahead. For the UCF game, do you expect Gus Malzahn to come out wearing an Auburn shirt? <laughs> no way. No way. I would, I would love him to be here, but I would be disappointed if he didn't have a UCF shirt on. You know, when I was down there wearing a little UC, sport, a little UCF, he was playing Boise State. I mean, he wasn't playing Auburn. If he was playing Auburn. I'd be. I'd have my Auburn gear. I'd be loud and I'd be proud. There'd be no conflict there, and I don't think there would be one for Gus either. I was just going to ask, you give a lot of the freedom to your guys when the when the time calls for it. When you have so many new players, how do you adjust them to the balance of freedom versus play and how you want them to play? Yeah, it, you, we're there now. I'm getting right there right now. So what we do is we keep stats. And I, look, I don't decide who gets, I don't get to decide who shoots the three ball. You guys get to decide. We've kept stats all summer and all fall so far. And if you're shooting 20% from three, because the coach has given you the freedom to shoot that shot, and as we get close to the season, you keep taking that shot. You don't have to answer to me. You have to answer to the other guys in the locker room. You know, you, at some point you have to put that thing away and go do something else. So I let those guys make those decisions because you know it's the oldest thing in the world. You all got kids, and if you don't, you're going to have kids. You know, comes a coach won't let me shoot. Coach won't let me do this. Coach won't let me do that. Man, I don't need to do that. You, you, and if when they understand it themselves, then they'll understand. You know, early in our offenses, that's when they can be more aggressive. Um, in middle offense, they shouldn't take a bad shot because I know that we can get the ball to our point guards and run something late that's really hard to guard. So if you see a bad shot and it happens early in our offense, that's actually better for me. But if you see a bad shot in the middle part of our offense, that's that's probably going to require a substitution. <laughs> so. We're going to get the guys out here. Yep. The guys are the guys who 